So, um, with, you know, Sony, Nintendo and Microsoft all getting this DLC, um, you know, I've been uh, thinking, what separates good DLC from bad DLC? Now, um, let's get the obvious out of the way. A DLC that should have been in the game from the start should, you know, is automatically bad DLC. Um, I remember this one game, I can't remember the name of it for the life of me because I heard about this ages ago, but this one game that you bought it and the, and I think it was like the last two or three or the one or like two or the two or three chapters before the last chapter was locked unless you paid for them and this was a game you already paid for so yeah so on disc on disc content bad you know paid on disc content that's that's definitely bad um but um we're talking more specifically DLC game uh parts of games that were not on the disc or cartridge if you're on the switch um, originally, and it uh, took time to develop after the fact, after the game was released. Um, right, now let's start with bad DLC. So, we already talked about bad DLC, it's just like DLC, you know, on disc DLC and DLC that, that should have been in the game from the start. Um, but some other bad bits of DLC. Right, I wouldn't really say Smash 4 was DLC was bad, but it was very lackluster because it included um, characters that weren't in the game before. Well, was in the was in the previous game, but wasn't in this game for X reason. Uh, probably time constraint, if you ask me. Stages and uh, they were all highly priced, relatively speaking. I think you got like one character and one stage for like 10 quid. I can't remember off the top of my head but I remember it being quite expensive. Um, and some were just costumes for the Miis which didn't even really do that much. I mean they were they were nice but they were very expensive. That is bad DLC. You took away something from a previous game and then you're selling it back to, back to them. Mario Kart hey, um, Mario Kart 8 had good DLC. Uh, it added uh, two new characters in Link and Isabel. It added uh, two new cups and it, um, what else? It added one more thing else. I can't remember. It added some else. Anyway, um, that was relatively good DLC because it was cheap. You know, it was relatively cheap and it, uh, um, you know, it didn't feel like uh, you know buying them you got an incomplete game um, and uh, um, you know just bad DLC you know like I've been saying it's just like something that should have been in the game already like you know, or you know you're selling that you know people something back what you had taken out from a from the previous game um, I think Smash 4's DLC could have easily, easily been fixed just by lowering the price. Like, seriously, like, one character, two quid. I would have been happy with that. I would have bought every character. But the only character I bought was Mewtwo. I bought um, Peach's Castle from the N64 and Hyrule Castle from Ocarina of Time. That's the only bit of DLC I bought. Um, if, if like, they, a character had been two quid and, like, a stage one quid and then, like, a cut me costume one quid. I would have probably bought, you know, all the stages and all the characters. I, um, uh, and then what makes good DLC is um, like my own Rabbit's Kingdom Battles DLC. Um, that DLC added hours of gameplay on uh, to uh, um, what was already existing. Um, and I'm sorry if I don't mention other like games DLC. I don't know much about all the games DLC. Like I do have an Xbox One. I only got a PS One and PS Two. Never got a PS Three or Four. Um, and I have my 360, but I've never really bought much DLC before the Switch. Like the, I think the first bit of DLC I bought was Mewtwo. 
for Smash 4. And then that's pretty much it to after you know after that I bought after I bought Mewtwo and the um castles, I pretty much stopped buying DLC until the Switch. Um so forgive me if I don't know much about all the consoles DLC. Um So yeah, um like I was saying, uh, that had hours of gameplay on top of what you already had, and it came relatively cheap. Um, well, else? So, well, so, uh, Breath of the Wild. I bought the DLC. I liked it. Uh, not the best DLC, um, but it added more of what I originally liked about uh, Breath of the Wild. I mean. I would have liked more background on the champions and um, Link, but it, the cutscenes we got were very nice. My personal favourite being, um, oh, I can't remember her name, the, the Princess of the Zora with her little brother. Like that, I think that's probably my favourite um, part of the DLC, apart from the motorbike, the motorbike was just the best. Like, I, apparently it's slower than the horse, or well, a max speed horse, but it's just like, yeah, but they have Stanimus, uh, they're not always going at their max speed, where this is pretty much just going at its max speed all the time, and you don't have to refuel it too often. And it's more fun to just ride around. Um, so yeah, there's ups and downs both. But yeah, the high, high lean cycle, whatever it's called, yeah, that's good. Um, Odyssey and the eight Deluxe, Cart 8 Deluxe, and they've received free... Um, updates, which is nice because you got um, Breath of the Wild Link and uh, the, his Hyrulean cycle in um, 8 Deluxe, um, and um, you've also got now got um, Labo compatibility with it, which is cool. Um, I'm yeah, not a big fan of how they laid out the um, motorcycle one. Like I would change a couple things about it, but yeah, not bad from what I've seen. Um, what else? Um, um, Odyssey has received new costumes and the um, Luigi balloon chase, which yeah, fun. Yeah, I, I've played. I definitely more. It's just giving me, pardon me. It's just giving me more of what I originally liked about Mario Odyssey, which is good. Um, and I definitely think if they do do release. Uh, DLC for I'd probably buy it because it, especially if it adds like a couple new kingdoms like my bet is that they're gonna add like one or two more kingdoms onto it like maybe you go to a different planet if you reach a certain amount of moons um, or um, I don't know you uh, Bowser kidnaps Mario and you have to play as Peach to try and save Mario uh, or something, you know, and you have like a, a small amount of stages to try and save Mario. But instead of Bowser trying to marry Mario, he's trying to like kill him or something. I don't know. Um, well, uh, so yeah, the the big difference between good and bad DLC is content and price. Like, does it have? Uh, does it give you more of what you originally like about the game? Yes or well, no. If it does, then it's good. If it doesn't, then it's bad. Well, that aspect of it is. And then you also have the price. Is it reasonably priced? Yes. And if it does both, then yeah, it's good. Con it's a good bit of DLC. But you know, like I said, there, there, there's DLC. Like I said, Smash Bros. for DLC it doesn't add too much. I mean. Playing on um, Peter's castle from Nintendo 64 and um, the High Hyru Ruling Castle from Ocarina of Time, that was fun for about five minutes. Like it just wasn't worth the price, so that's why that was bad DLC. Um, Breath of the Wild DLC added a good challenge, and you know it was just all fun. But anyway, tell me, do you, what do you think of these DLCs? Do you, or do you agree with what I released my opinion of what separates good and bad DLC? And uh, what game would you like to see DLC come out for? Um, and if you 
know about DLC on like Xbox and PlayStation, put it, you know, put that down in the comment section and tell, tell me about it because I, like I said, I don't know much about um. I, did, I don't play on my Xbox One that much, I mean, it has a lot of good games, but it's just like, most of them are first person shooters, which I'm not a big fan of, like, I enjoy my GoldenEye games, but not a big fan of first person shooters, and so I mainly just play Rare Replay, and I don't have a PS4, so, anyway, see you guys in the next video, bye bye.